If you're looking for ND filters for the Mini 3 or the Mini 3 Pro, this video is for you. You know that ND filters are a must for videography if you want to achieve that cool cinematic effect. Uh, also, if you want to prevent having jello in your shot, that's also going to be a great way to do it. Now, they come in a variety of different prices and also a variety of different brands, but are they all the same? Well, we're going to answer this in this video. We put five of these sets under pressure by testing the density strength, accuracy of the filters, the color variation, and they were a lot, and then also the sharpness. So is the $70 a set going to be better than the $40 set? Well, let's find out. Now, if you don't know what ND filters are, make sure that you check out the video that we did right here that explains all of the different things about ND filters. And also, I have a disclaimer for you. Uh, we got sets from Freewell. They send us an all day and the bright day set. They also send us an anamorphic, which we actually didn't test in this video. We're gonna do in the vi another video just on that. But we did buy the other sets out of our own pocket. Now, it's not because somebody sends us something that we are gonna give it a good review. As a matter of fact, you'll see that, well, you might be surprised uh, by the results that we found. So I thought I would mention this. Let's move on to the next thing. Now, you know that ND filters are designed to remove light from your sensor. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, if you want to change your shutter speed on your drone when you do videos to get a bit more of a cinematic look, that's going to be the way to do it. Now, obviously, Removing light doesn't mean that we should be changing the color. And we know, and maybe you don't, but uh, have tested enough of these that over time you find that some of these filters actually change the color of your image. And that's not a good thing. That's not something that we want to have. So uh, here what we did is we take this beautiful chart that's right behind me right here, and we take pictures in front of it using the different filters. We have a massive amount of lights that we use all around it so we can do these tests for you. And uh, here are the results. So I'm using Lightroom right here. This is all the raw files that we can captured. And then you can see on the left side, I have a base. Without any filter, we do a base image. And then we start putting the filters on and then eventually go from uh, one to the next. So this right here on the right side is going to be our ND4. Now you're going to say, is this good? Yeah, it is actually pretty good. You can see, and I can see from the raw image that there is a tiny little bit of difference. It's a tiny little bit yellow, uh, but really, really to uh, the naked eye, you probably wouldn't be able to tell unless you were really looking for that information. And then you go to the next set and this is where I thought there was the biggest surprise. And the ND8 is actually clearly very much more yellow than the base footage or even the ND4 that we saw before. Now you'll see there's another issue with this specific filter, which we'll talk about uh, in the next chapter of this video, but ND8 in this case, not so good. This is an expensive filter. This is $69.99 for this set of filters from Freewell. And quite frankly, I was not impressed. Now, if we go back to the next one, which is our ND16, the colors uh, tend to go back to more neutral neutral colors like we saw uh, earlier with the ND4. And then here we have the ND32, which is also pretty neutral. They did a pretty good job in this case. And then the ND64 was actually the best one of all of them as far as comparing to the base model. So in this case, I would say the bright day uh, from Freewell, not probably the best set, especially for the amount of money. But now let's take a look at the next one, which is the Freewell as well, all day in this case. So bright day, all day, that's the $49.99 uh, set. And then in this case, you can see right here, this is our base footage as well. I'm going to drag it. And then this right here is ND4 on the right side. It actually looks pretty good, uh, pretty much exactly the same as the, uh, the base footage that we got. ND8 was also doing pretty good. And then ND 16, not so good. You can also see here. So Freewell seems to have an issue with their uh, 16, whatever filter they're using doesn't seem to be doing as well as the other one. So there was a significant change here, I thought. And then we go back to the ND32. This one was actually a little bit more on the blue side and then back to ND64, which was uh, also doing pretty good. All in all for $49.99, I would not put that at the top either in this case. Let's move on to the next one, which is the newer, which is only 50 cents cheaper. Let's take a look at the base image right here for that. And then let's take a look at the uh, first image right here. Now this set, I have to mention, does not come with an ND4. Uh, I'm going to say I've probably never used an ND4 in my life. I think ND8, ND16 or typically the ones that I use the most, sometimes ND32. Uh, but the ND4 here in this case was actually really close to the baseline uh, that we had set for this 
this set. And then the uh, ND16 also did really good. Uh, maybe a little bit of orange, but not nearly as much as we saw in the free well. And then the ND32 was also really good. And then the ND64 was a little bit more on the blue side. But I have to say for those filters that are uh, in the 8, 16, and 32 range, uh, there was quite a bit of consistency between all those. So this is, uh, to me, one of the good pick right here. Now let's take, let's keep going down in price and see if we can find another good set. Uh, the Artman right here, $49.79, also available on Amazon. Uh, again, I'm gonna grab our base footage. And then also only comes with an ND8. Now some of these sets also come with an ND128, which we did not test. First off, it's really, really dark. Uh, we had to bring a, a ton of light to test these things. And we just ran out of light, even with all the stuff that we have available in the studio, we weren't able to do it. So ND128, not something that we tested. Plus, I don't think many people are ever gonna use an ND128. So I wanted to try to keep it somewhat consistent uh, between all the different brands. So uh, ND8 here for the Artman does really good. Not a whole lot of changes. I, as a matter of fact, I can't see any changes between the two. And then we have an ND16, a little bit of blue tone in this case. So on the opposite side of the orange, if you want, this was a little bit more on the blue side. And then ND32, pretty consistent with the ND16. You can see the difference between the two here uh, as I toggle. And then the ND64, also pretty much a very consistent. So I would say for the price, 41.79, fairly consistent all across. Cross. Uh, I'd rather have a set that is fairly consistent with even if it's a little bit of blue tones because I can easily fix that. Uh, if I were to switch uh, filters during the, in the middle of a flight, having different tones from one to the next or different color temperature uh, would be pretty bad if you wanted to match your edit. So I would say Artman does a really good job in this case. I was actually very surprised. And then the cheapest of all these, $39.99, that's the Sky Reed, uh, also available on Amazon. Now, in this case here, uh, the uh, ND8 also comes in, doesn't come with ND4, but ND8 uh, is available right here. Uh, consistency was pretty close, a little bit of orange tones in this case compared to our baseline. Uh, same thing on the next one, so pretty consistent between 8 and 16. And then also, uh, back to 32, 32 was very much in line with our test. And then lastly, here we had uh, at uh, ND64, uh, also kind of consistent with ND32 and, and consistent with our base footage. So uh, I would say if I had to classif classify them in order in this case, uh, I would say Artman probably at the top, followed by Newer and Skyreach, very, very close to each other. And then the Freewell All Day, and then the Freewell Bright Day, which happens to be almost in order of the cheapest to the most expensive. So that was a big surprise uh, in this case. Now, something else that's extremely important with ND filters is if they are actually accurate as to what the marking is on the ND filter. Uh, you've heard me say ND4, ND8, ND16, 32, and so on and so forth. What this really means is how much light are they actually removing from the sensor? And we measure all this in what's called a stop of light. And a stop of light is the equivalent of a certain amount of light getting into the camera. Anytime that you double your shutter speed or reduce your your shutter speed in half, then that's gonna be a full stop of light. Every time you go from ISO 100 to ISO 200, every time you double up your ISO or you divide your ISO by two, that's also a full stop of light. If you look at it from an aperture perspective, it's a bit more complex, but if you go, let's say from 1.4 uh, to F2, it's also going to be a full stop of light or F2 to F2.8, another full stop of light. So this is how we decided to measure the accuracy of these ND filters. An ND two, which we don't have in any of these filters, is one stop of light. An ND4 is two stops of light. An ND8 is three stops of light, and so on and so forth. So what we did is we put it to the test. We set up the camera in manual mode. We put it in, a, in an environment where we had a fixed amount of light, and then we put a filter onto the drone, and we saw how many stops of light actually was dropped. And we recorded all that data, and the results were actually pretty amazing. So if you take a look at each of the sets, let's start with the most expensive again with the bright day. Well, it turns out the bright day was on spot, pretty much exactly as advertised. 
ND4 was two stops, ND8 was three stops, ND16 was four stops, all the way to ND64, that was six stops of light. And we verified that twice. And it was amazing. The results were, this was actually very pleasing to see that the most expensive filter was actually on par. Now, when we looked at the all day filter, a little bit of a, of a difference here, the ND4, instead of being two stops of light was uh, 1.7 or one and two thirds, uh, if you want to be extremely precise. And then ND8 was on par. The problem was, the big problem was between ND8 and ND16. Uh, I told you there were some issues here. Well, turns out between ND8 and ND16, there was only a third of a stop of a drop, which is not nearly enough. Should have been a full stop. AKA, what, in, in normal language, ND8 and ND16 are pretty much exactly the same filters. So the, the free well all day is gonna go in the trash can right now, completely unusable because ND16 is pretty much the filter that you're gonna use the most along with ND8. You have two of these filters in here and both of them are pretty much ND8 filters. So uh, not really impressed here and not really happy. Now from here, ND32, it kind of skewed all the data after that because ND32 all of a sudden, instead of being negative five, was only negative four and one third, which was uh, not nearly close enough. Uh, that should have been basically an ND16. So if you have that set, if you wanna use an ND16, just put the ND32 on because well, it's pretty much exactly what it is. And an ND64 was almost like an ND32, a slightly dark ND32. So not impressed with the free well at all. Now looking at the newer, remember the newer performed pretty well as far as color comparison. Uh, as far as the accuracy, it was also pretty close. Negative three for an ND8, negative four for an ND16. And then at ND32, it was uh, two thirds of a stop instead of being a full stop. I say it's pretty close. Uh, in real life, you probably wouldn't notice that big of a difference. And then ND64 was also pretty close within a one third of a stop. So I'm gonna say the newer in this case was uh, pretty darn good. The sky read, uh, the somewhat okay. Uh, we went from ND8 at negative three, which is good, that's spot on. The ND16 was only uh, negative 3.6. That was a little bit short. And then from here, ND32 was also pretty short. Uh, the ND32 was pretty close to being a real ND16. And then ND64 uh, was uh, one full stop difference between ND32, still a little bit short. So um, again, sky reads, kind of went down in the ranking a little bit at this stage. Uh, I would say I would put Noor probably in position number two. I had it in position number three before. And then Artman uh, did actually fairly okay. Uh, surprisingly, they were the only ones that were a bit darker than advertised. So uh, ND8 was on par, ND16 was a bit darker, negative 4.3 as, as opposed to negative four. And then ND32, negative 5.3 as opposed to negative five. And then ND32 and ND64, they were pretty close to each other. Uh, uh, they were uh, only 0.3 uh, different. So uh, because I don't use the ND64 so much, I'm not gonna take too many points off the Artman. Uh, and then it's kind of like, uh, I like the fact that it's one of the cheapest one out there and actually has been performing uh, pretty well this whole time. So uh, I would still put the Artman after doing these two tests at the top, followed by the newer and then the Sky Read, And then after that, the two Freewell, uh, because I don't think uh, they did nearly as well. I would say the Freewell Bright Day, the most expensive one, I would put that in fourth position and then the, uh, the free well all day uh, because of that ND16. I would put that at the very, very end. So from here, we only have one more test to do and it's gonna be extremely quick, which is the sharpness. And I looked at these pictures and I looked and I looked and I looked and I looked. And uh, quite frankly, uh, I don't see any difference in sharpness, which is good. All these filters were pretty neutral. They should not be removing any sharpness from your images. Uh, this is all done, like I said, in the studio, in the control environment, in manual focus, and all these images did really good. Now, we also took these drones and we went out into the open. We actually put three of these on Octozilla, our uh, drone carrier, and we flew three M uh, Mini 3 at the same time with three different sets. So you can see the exact same flight from three different birds uh, recording with the same exact uh, neutral density filter on top of it. I'm gonna show you the footage and I'm gonna let you decide here which one you prefer. And this is it for this video. Enjoy the footage. <laughs> 